Hey, welcome to another missionary adventure, and we continue our spiritual pilgrimage through the uh, Celtic lands of Wales and Ireland. And now we're in Northern Ireland. We head to Scotland tomorrow and then into England. And we're going to awesome places of spiritual revival and awakening, places where God raised up Celtic Christians to plant churches and take the gospel around the rest of Europe. This is Bangor Abbey, and Bangor was a place that was founded about 1,500 years ago by a saint by the name of St. Cumgall. It says here that uh, St. Cumgall founded the abbey in 558 AD, and it grew to become one of the most important seats of learning in Ireland, with almost 3,000 monks at the time of Cumgall's death in 6, 601 AD. Two of its most famous students were Columbanus and St. Gall, who traveled throughout Europe setting up monasteries, houses of prayer, churches, taking the gospel to a very dark European continent in the 7th century, so the early 600s, the late the late 500s, and they traveled in boldness and passion to take the gospel of Jesus Christ all throughout Europe. And Europe was and is forever changed because of that. What again, what the Celts were known for, the Celtic Christians, is they were known for 24-7 prayer. So the passion for prayer, the passion for writing songs of worship, usually based on the Psalms, the memorizing of the Psalms, the singing of the Psalms, and the importance of, 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 of education. You know, back in those days, 1,500 years ago, Ireland was known as, the, as kind of the outback of Europe. But it eventually became known as this major seat of learning and scholarship because of the Christians and their teaching that went on here. So the Celtic Christians put a high emphasis on worship, on prayer, and studying of the Word of God. Uh, it goes on to say that uh, the most celebrated literary work to come out of the monastery is the 7th century Bangor Antiphony, which is a collection of hymns and prayers and poems now kept uh, in a library in Milan, Italy. Bangor's vulnerability to attack, being that it's right near uh, Belfast here and on the coast, it was attacked several times by Viking raiders who would steal and pillage. And uh, so probably the most valuable asset of this monastery was a bell, a bronze bell that St. Cumgall would, would bang this bell to call, the, to call the monks to prayer eight times a day. And so as the Vikings were coming one time, they hid this bell and then it was forgotten where it was hidden. And it was hidden for over a thousand years and it was found just about 200 years ago as they were digging a grave on these very grounds. And so that's a real treasured possession. The um, abbey went into dis, dis uh, uh, kind of began to fall apart then for hundreds of years. And in the 12th century, uh, it was reestablished again to bring a, a spiritual awakening to the rest of Ireland as well. So just a... Uh, in this process of taking you around Ireland, it's exciting for Kathy and I to be back here in Bangor. We were here originally in 2001 with our daughter, Jenny, at that time. So we'll continue on to Scotland and then the island of Lindisfarne, also known as Holy Island and St. Aidan. And we'll share more about him in a future video. Until next time, remember that it's worth serving Jesus. Bye-bye.